the never-ending supply of thongs. But you know that they're not from Australia because there's never a thong bigger than that and that's the size of my foot. You always feel like Jumanji when you walk through this. You feel it like all these vines, there's millions of vines just gonna come and and then drag you away. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tap holes. Hope Just Island. Arrived at this beautiful little island. We've got it all to ourselves. Just another one. <laughs> Here it is. It's about halfway. And that's the other end there. And the camping area in there. Looks like someone's had a bit of a fire. I reckon we should circumnavigate an island. Yeah. Two days in a row. Good idea. Yesterday we circumnavigated um, Mackay uh, Reef Cay, and today we're gonna to circumnavigate Hope Island, or uh, at least one of the two Hope Islands. So yeah, let's walk around. Let's see how long it takes. What do you reckon? Yeah, okay. Half an hour? Oh. Yeah, something like that. Ten minutes. <laughs> so yeah. big. You can't walk through it. Look at this. It's solid. You definitely can't walk through it. Time for cricket. You ready? Yeah. This is very light, this ball. Oh, not bad. Yay! What's that? One of the nice things about going um, onto the, well, nice and horrible. Nice because something to do, horrible because it's usually plastic, but uh, finding things on the beach. You find things like... God, I don't even know, I think that's Thai language. So Thai... Um, thing goes. Lots of foam. Now that's not an Australian bottle because we don't have that size in Australia. So that would have come from Asia somewhere, I'd say. Um, bit of an old fishing crate or a milk crate or a beer crate. And you could, I mean, you could collect this stuff. Well, we could fill our boat every single day with this stuff. But you just can't do it. You just can't. I mean, it just goes on forever. That's a fluoro tube. Oh, we had a fluoro tube in uh, Tumotis. Yeah. And, I mean, more bottles. You know, these have come from who knows where. Um, and the never-ending the never-ending supply of thongs. But you know that they're not from Australia because there's never a thong bigger than that and that's the size of my foot. I just found some Australian rubbish. Bottle of wine. Let's see what it is. <laughs> bottle of Australian vinegar and it just goes on and on and on and on and that I've walked four meters and there's been 20 bits of rubbish and you get tired and tired of seeing it and you can only really do your own part and a little bit more but you can't pick it all up because you can't store it the next place I go to, there won't be a recycling centre. I don't know what the answer is, but I mean, that's the topic that, yeah. What do we do? What do we do? I mean, look, it's just another two steps and you've got a, 
a fuel drum and rope. Another few steps, and you've got a Australian Coke bottle, proudly manufactured in Australia. Um, more foam. Yeah, what do you do? This is just one of tens of hundreds of thousands of islands. Anyway, we're going to go for a walk. See you guys. Now there is a resident croc on this island. Oh god, yeah, I've forgotten about that. You forgot? Did you forget about it? I forgot about the croc. So we're being a bit wary. Oh. We're staying up pretty high. There's another couple of pairs of thongs. Oh no, that's a lady's slipper. Yeah, nice slipper. Um, yeah, there's a resident croc here. Ooh. So he, you, when, you, when there's a crocodile around on the beach, you always stay up high. At least you can see it coming and it gives you a few more minutes to say goodbye before the end. <laughs> yeah, anyway, keep an eye out. See ya. Always intrigued how different the windward side is to the leeward side. The windward side's all bashed in and there's like trees struggling to survive. On the southern side you've got all your delicate succulents and little ferns and here you've got like this struggling. So it's always interesting to see the difference between the two. Ah! Oh. Okay, you ready? Yep. Woo! Good shot, babe. Pretty cool. It's an island in the middle of nowhere. A long drop and a pretty flash one. When you're far enough back, I'm in the bush here. Check it out. 
That's a throne and a half. Do I feel like Jumanji when you walk through this? You feel it like all these vines, there's millions of vines just going to come and, and then drag you away. <laughs> These camping spots are unreal! So we're getting ready to head off. We've got about 20 or so miles to get to Cooktown. There's a big blow coming. So we need to find somewhere safe for at least a week or two. And the river at Cooktown only has a limited number of spots. So we thought if we head early, we might have a bit of a choice. So that's the plan. Also, the site of the first uh, prolonged white person um, landing on Australian soil. Also, where the first interactions with Aboriginals, sustained interactions, friendly sustained interactions, happened. Um, there was a bit of hoo ha, but on the main, um, it was all pretty friendly. It's also where the kangaroo was first sighted close up and named the kangaroo um, from the Aboriginal word, local uh, word of this area, um, which was kangaroo. It wasn't quite kangaroo, but very similar. It's also where uh, botanists um, banked, they collected so many different species of um, flora and fauna. They hunted out on the reef to keep the men fed during the repairs and also to fill their larders. Um, they collected berries and fruit in the area. And, but most importantly, and coincidentally, right now there's a little boat um, repair facility right there. So it's quite ironic that you've got the slipway right next to where right next to where Captain Cook uh, repaired the Endeavour. There's a beautiful sculpture here, it looks like a bronze sculpture, dedicated to Captain Cook. The sculptor was Stanley Hammond, MBE, done in 1987. So, yeah. What are you doing, babe? I'm uh, putting the new tap hardware in. Taking the old one out first, of course. Don't know how long that's been in here. That'd be right, all over me, that's where I have to go. Usually it wouldn't be this rough with braided hoses, but these are, are not being used anymore. Taps out now. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tap holes. Mm. So the plan is to take all the tap hardware out, put this nice bit of teak in, because it's the closest I could find colour match. 
um, and then just have four holes for the four taps. So varnish this up, cover all the holes up, because all the wood in here is rotten, it's rotten, it's been wet for 40 years I suppose. Um, usually when you cut a hole, you long term, you want to um, varnish it in there or uh, put some epoxy in. But anyway, this will fix it temporarily until we put the new kitchen top in. So that's the new tap? Yeah. All shiny and new. this.